Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Welcome to Newsbreak. Should Russian athletes be banned from world sport? The latest on flooding in New South Wales. And the world's largest puppet. Before we get started, why not hit subscribe? More sporting bodies are banning Russian athletes from competing in international events in response to the war in Ukraine. Some are still letting athletes take part, but without their country's name and flag. Here's Leela. Sport organisations all over the world lately have been asking one question. Should Russian athletes be allowed to compete? It's something many have already answered with a big no. The International Olympic Committee, World Federations for Soccer, Athletics, Basketball, Skiing, Volleyball, Rowing, Badminton, Ice Skating, Ice Hockey? The list goes on. They've all decided to ban Russian and Belarusian teams, athletes and officials from international events to support Ukraine. Belarus is included because it's a close ally of Russia. The IOC says the decision is also about the safety of athletes. Some sports, like tennis, are allowing players to still compete, but not under the name or flag of Russia or Belarus. World Taekwondo is doing that too. And it's also stripped President Vladimir Putin of his honorary black belt in the sport. As you can imagine, Russia's not happy about any of this. And there's a lot of people who argue that it's unfair to punish Russian athletes who haven't done anything wrong. So, what do you think? It's unfair on them. They might think that the wars are bad and they don't want any part of the war. I think for like their safety, I guess they shouldn't, because I feel like maybe some Ukrainian or maybe not just Ukrainian, like other countries might get like angry. People who come from Ukraine or have family in Ukraine would be really upset about what's going on. So I think that they shouldn't be allowed to, but it, it's not the athlete's fault. Sport is sport. It is not related to war in any means. So in theory, they should be able to play for sport. It looks like there's more flooding on the way in New South Wales. Sydney siders woke up to some wet weather this morning, and people around Sydney and the Central Coast have been told to prepare for a whole lot more of it, along with strong winds. We're expecting to see uh, very heavy rainfall um, today. Marine scientists are working on building a library of sounds made by creatures that live underwater. Might sound a little strange, but those sounds can tell us a lot. Here's Emma. You might not think a lot about the sounds that are made by these guys. But marine scientists like Dr Miles Parsons from the Australian Institute of Marine Scientists do. He says the oceans are full of weird and wacky sounds. A paddle crab, for example, sounds like this. This is a strict scanard and a red piranha. So you can use it to get an idea of the animals that are in a certain place. You can use it to monitor the migration paths of animals like the whales. Now, Miles is leading a project to get all those aquatic sounds into one spot. It's the Global Library of Underwater Biological Sounds, or as we've affectionately called it, GLUBS. He says GLUBS will be a huge help to researchers. We're able to get a much better idea of how um, the soundscapes change in different places. Now it's time for some... Yeah. Some very big news, huh? Some very large things. Okay, sure. Big news for Tasmanians. The internet is back after a major outage yesterday. Two undersea cables connecting the island to mainland Australia were cut within the space of two hours. It meant shops couldn't process card payments, flights were delayed, and ATMs and electric scooters were frozen. Big news in the Dino Kingdom. The T-Rex, the OG king of the dinosaurs, might actually be three different species. That's according to a guy called Gregory Paul, who worked on Jurassic Park as a dino expert. He thinks there's too much variation between the T-Rex fossils we have for them all to be one species. And finally, big news in the puppet kingdom. This is Percy the Porcupine, and according to its creators, is the biggest puppet in the world. It's about 20 foot by 20 foot, thousands of hours. I mean, just, just applying all those quills, making the quills and applying them. It was unveiled to this very excited crowd in California in the US. 
Well, that's all the news we've got for you today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> um, yes, sir. Oh, subscribe. Yes, of course. Make sure you hit subscribe. <laughs> Is that good? Thank you.